Welcome to another session of RD Works Learning Lab. Uh, today we're going to revisit bitmaps. Now that I've got my machine running well, um, it's time to get serious with some of these little tasks that I've got lined up. One of those tasks is to produce um, some coasters for my daughter. Um, her elderly German short-haired pointer, he happens to be 10 in this photograph, is probably not going to live too many more years and she was looking for something to immortalise him with and uh, this was a nice approach but as you can see these early attempts at trying to get a photograph onto wood were 99% failures. I've got to learn a lot more about putting photographs onto wood and I do know that wood is a difficult medium to put a photograph onto so I tackled the problem a different way and said wood is very good for wood cutting why don't I attempt to produce a woodcut rather than a photograph? And that's what this session is all about. So here's the picture I started off with. And before I go any further, I must point you towards this guy here, technology guru, who did a tutorial about converting a photo to a line drawing. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details of how to do it, but I will quickly move through the steps that he recommends. I break away from his technique after a certain stage and then we carry on and adapt it for laser, laser engraving. So if we take a quick look up on the right hand side here I've got my uh, Photoshop menu bar and haven't opened the picture we then go to the stage where we uh, make it we make it into a, an unlocked layer by double clicking on it and then we produce a duplicate layer and as you can see down the bottom here here's the duplicate layer we then go to the top layer and we learn about um, some blending options and if you look at the video you'll find out which blending option to use and that produces a rather strange looking picture like this now it gets even worse when you go to invert because the picture seems to almost disappear but then we go up to the filters and we select a Gaussian blur. Well after you fiddle around with the Gaussian blur you can finish up with a picture that looks like this. Doesn't look anything like a sketch but it's getting there. Um, there's quite a lot of crisp detail in the picture now and uh, all the colour, nearly all the colour has disappeared. Well the next stage is to make all the colour disappear by going into the saturation and hue menu and reducing the saturation to zero. That way you get no colour and it be it's becoming close to a sketch now. Um, but it's still got lots of other things in the background for instance. There's quite a bit of colour. Um, there's not a great deal of contrast in the picture. And at this point we now have to start learning for ourselves. Um, you have to fiddle with your picture and I've messed around with the brightness and the contrast here and managed to get a fairly crisp looking picture and at that stage I saved it. So we've now saved this picture ready to process it in RD Works. So here's one I've produced earlier let's see if we can reproduce it. I'll do an import and as you can see it comes in bigger than the page so we zoom out and we have already got handles around here and I've decided I want to make this a hundred millimeters square so I've put the lock on up the top left hand corner here and I'm going to change just one of these dimensions to a hundred mil and the picture now shrinks to a hundred mil and we can go back and we can have a look at the full size page now so what I've now got to do is to work on this picture within here to try and improve it and the way that we can do that is to go up to handle and we'll put our bitmap handle on there's the picture that we brought in and what we're going to do is to the resolution is pretty good at 300 and 320 we can fiddle with the brightness we can take the brightness up a little bit but we can't see that we have to keep fiddling with this apply view button so look we move it up a bit and all of a sudden it's gone very bright 
we can increase the contrast and apply. Take the brightness down. The background has come down quite a lot now, so we want to try and make the background disappear. Too bright. So as we bring the brightness down you can see we've got an edge to his head especially over his eyebrow there that's the that's the one area where you need to keep an eye on because there is a black line down here which is good so you get delineation of your shape all the way round except just above his eyebrow and so that's the critical area that we're looking to try and improve so can we improve it by increasing the contrast just a bit can we improve it by taking down the brightness just a bit? Yes. It's a little bit darker than the one that I had over here. Um, and it hasn't got quite as much definition. It's muddier in his face area. So I think we could take the brightness up just a shade. It's starting to clean it up. Now there is no magic to this, it's whatever you feel is right. It needs enough black lines in it to leave the correct impression. And now, now that we've got the picture approximately where we want it, we're also looking for clarity in his eye by the way as well, because that's a key feature when you're producing a photograph, the eyes. So now what we can do is we can go into dither mode and we can set our dither to, well I've got this one set to the same sort of resolution as the picture it's 350 lines per inch and we make sure that we've got grayscale gray selected now what we can do is see what the result of this is going to be when we apply it to this picture it hasn't changed it a great deal okay but now we need to apply it to the source if we're happy with the end result so we can go to the source which has now applied it to this picture here and we can say OK. Now it doesn't look as though it's changed but we have to click on the picture to make it change and there we go. So maybe it's a slightly lighter picture than that one. It might work as well, it might not work quite as well. I think it's probably just a shade too light but anyway you get the idea this is where you have to fiddle with it to get something that will produce a good end result. And once you've got this done, I will just delete this one. We'll put the handles on this one and up here what I've got is a red square, about 95 square. So I've got a picture which is 100 mil square roughly and a cutout which is 95 mil square. So what I'm now doing is placing the picture over the cutout tool here for the picture and I've set the speed at 120 millimeters a second it is scan mode and I've set the power to fairly high at 60 percent which is nearly as high as my machine will go and now we'll go and do the cut mode well I know that I'm going to do this in four millimeter plywood and I happen to know that 10 millimeters per second is about as much as I can get on maximum power which is 65 percent so all we've got to do now is to save the file to a memory stick and take it to the machine. Right, let's see how this drawing finally turns out. Now because I've turned this into a pencil sketch, I don't have to worry about any shades of grey. I'm pushing the laser quite hard. Um, I've got it up to 60% which is more or less full power on my machine and I'm running it quite slowly at about 120 millimeters a second. Now what that actually does is to produce quite a deep cut in the black areas and so consequently well, I get quite a nice 3D effect on the engraving when it's finished. Well here's the half dozen I plan to produce and 
they do have a slightly sticky feel about the surface which is obviously where the resins have come out and recondensed on the surface and on the edges as well um, but what I'm doing to solve two problems at once I did want to treat them because they are coasters and I don't want them to get wet and damaged um, what I'm using is a sort of a, a hard wax which I'm painting on with a paintbrush to get into all the nooks and crannies working the wax in with the paintbrush doesn't fill in any of the uh, sort of fairly I would think that it's probably at least half a mil deep the cut on here as you can probably see they've changed colour slightly they've gone slightly more golden I suppose as opposed to the sort of a white birch plywood look So just do the edges as well. And while I'm about it, I shall also do the back face. <laughs> 